Okay, North is dealer. No one is vulnerable. North has got uh, 10 points, 5, 3, 3, 2, which is a balanced shape. Uh, in the American system that we're North, South, and East, West are playing, um, if we had a few more points, let's say two more points, and therefore an opening hand, we would open one diamond and look to rebid one no trump, which is 12 to 14. In the standard American system, one no trump opening is 15 to 17, so we would open one diamond, our longest suit, and then rebid no trumps with 12 to 14. As it happens, we don't have 12 to 14, we've not quite got enough points to open the bidding. So this is a pass. Now to East. East has got an interesting hand, uh, distributional-wise. We've got um, seven points, five-five distribution. Um, so this would depend on what two level openers you were playing. Um, typically, you, t you tend to play weak twos, three weak twos in, in a standard American system. So therefore, two hearts would not be the correct opening because you need six cards in hearts. If we had that, i.e. that was the ace of hearts, it would be a perfect two heart opener. But given that we don't have a six card suit and we haven't got sufficient points to open at the one level, this is also a pass. Now to south. Okay, so south has got six, eight points in total. Um, perfectly balanced hand again, so no long suit to open, no preemptive bid, no nothing like that. Um, again, if we had a few more points, let's say we had another ace somewhere, um, in the standard American system we would, we would be opening one of a suit and then rebidding no trumps. Um, in the American system we play five card majors, so if we did have, let's say, four more points, i.e. 12, we would open one club and not one heart, because one heart promises five, so we'd open a club and then rebid one no trump, showing 12 to 14. However, we don't have enough points, so this is also Bass. Okay, to West. Hopefully West has got an opening bid. And indeed they have. West has got 10, 15 points in total. Um, playing SAYC, Standard American Yellow card, whenever we open one of a major, it promises five cards or more in that major, known as five card majors, simply. Um, so in this instance, we would be opening one spade. Um, that would promise five cards or more in spades to our partner. So we're looking to be bidding one spade, then two spades, which promises six. We could alternatively bid one spade, then two diamonds. Um, but I think it's good to get across a six card major suit if you have a choice of which one to do. Um, so yeah, we'd start with one spade, promising five in, in our American system, and wait to see what our partner does. Now back to north. Uh, West has opened one spade. Um, Overcalling in the American system is basically identical to most systems. You need a five card plus suit of good quality, you need the sufficient points. Um, in this instance I would argue that the diamond suit is not of sufficient quality. Queen XXX, I mean Queen 9 to 5, it's just not good enough to overcall. We do have the points to bid two diamonds, we've got 10 plus points, but we don't have the sufficient suit quality. If you had something like that, and I'd be very happy to bid two diamonds, but um, unfortunately we don't, so therefore I would be passing. So, um, after a one level major opening from our partner, our primary objective is to support the major. Now of course because we're playing the American system we know that there's at least five spades there. So we only need three for a fit. Unfortunately we don't have three, we have one. Um, so for a spade fit to be present we need our partner to have seven or more spades, which is, which is unlikely. Um, if we hadn't passed already, so if our partner opened one spade and we hadn't yet bid, any bid at the two level is known as two over one or game forcing. Um, so 2 over 1 game forcing is a, is a classic part of standard American yellow card. So what that means is 1 no trump in response to a 1 level bid. Instead of being 6 to 9, it's actually 6 to 11 because with 12 points or more you'd bid at the 2 level. Whereas with fewer than 12, you must bid at the 1 level. That's because 2 clubs, 2 hearts, etc. would all be game forcing in standard American yellow card. Now we have an interesting thing here in that we have passed already. So our partner knows we don't have... 12, otherwise we'd have opened the bidding. So two level bids promising 12 is a bit silly now, because we know here that we haven't got 12, so two clubs or two hearts promising 12 doesn't make any sense. So what a lot of players play is that two clubs, two diamonds, and sometimes two hearts, but normally two clubs or two diamonds, is a system known as Drury, which is a way of showing a raise in that major. Two clubs would show a weak raise in spades, two diamonds would show a stronger raise in spades. Now some people play that two clubs would be a three card raise and some people play two diamonds as a four card raise. Some players differentiate on points and there's also reverse drawing where you turn two diamonds and two clubs around. Um, as it happens, none of the above applies. We can't raise the spades at all, so two clubs, two diamonds being fancy bits of drawing 
don't even apply here. We can't bid two hearts because we haven't got sufficient points to do so. So the only bid we have in our box is one no trump. Because we've passed already, our partner knows we can't do a two over one bid anyway. And in fact, they don't really make sense. Um, so one no trump here would be semi-wide ranging in the sense that you'll be slightly, slightly, potentially slightly stronger playing the standard American yellow card. The key thing is that we don't, we don't want to be bidding at the two level with only, with only seven points. And we wouldn't be bidding at the two level, whatever. Um, the fact that we've passed denying 12 means one no trump is somewhere between six to ten-ish in that region. And obviously, principally, we're denying a spade fit. That's the important thing. So, one no trump is the correct bid. Okay, it's pretty much the same story for South. Um, they didn't have a bid as the opener because they haven't got enough points. We haven't got a five card suit. We haven't really got anything to say as South. So it's a straightforward pass. Now to West's rebid. Um, West has a choice of rebids, as I briefly mentioned earlier. We could bid two diamonds, showing five four, or we could bid spades again, promising six. Interestingly, in the standard American yellow card system, one spade being five means that two spades is always a six card suit. So that would be good, in the sense that we're showing a six card major. Uh, I actually prefer that to showing four, four diamonds, because diamonds are neither here nor there. If we had six spades and four hearts, I would be more inclined to show the 5-4, given that we're showing two majors now, and then look to bid spades later to show the true 6-4. But given that this is a four card minor, I'm not particularly bothered about bypassing the diamonds to show the six cards in spades, that's what I'm thinking. Um, so therefore, I, I would be rebidding two spades. I can't criticise a two diamond rebid, because it is correct, but I think a two spade rebid is better, because you're getting across a sixth spade, which is more important, in my opinion, than a four card diamond suit. So that would be my rebid, two spades. Okay, so back to East now. North South are, are going to be passing throughout. So it's just a case of what is East going to do over this rebidding structure. So West has promised six cards in spades or more, um, but they have denied a strong hand. So one spade, three spades would be six plus spades and 16 plus points. In this instance, uh, they're denying that number of points, so they've got sort of between 11 and 15 ish. So I know game isn't on, we've got seven, they've got a best of 15, and we haven't got a spade fit. Um, so really, the correct bid here is pass. We don't really want to start bidding three clubs or three hearts, trying to play in clubs or hearts instead. Um, we have got a spade, so we've got at least seven spades between the two of us, and we don't want to be in game. So I would now let my partner play in, play in their six card spade suit. So pass. Okay, so we're on lead to two spades. West is in two spades. Um, there's, a, there's immediately a standout lead that's, that's hitting me here, and that's because I love a sequence lead. Sequence leads are so safe because they don't give anything away and they build tricks for your side. And the best sequence, of course, is ace-king. So I would lead the ace from the ace-king of hearts against basically any trump contract here. Um, against no trumps, you'd probably be leading your long suit, but against trumps, top of touching two is almost always your best bet. The good thing about the ace from ace-king being, being the best sequence is that you almost certainly win a trick, unless someone's trumping it, which would be unlucky, and you get to see the dummy, so you can then formulate where you think the defence might need to go. So I would lead, I'd lead the Ace of Hearts in basically every trump contract from this hand. So, Ace of Hearts lead. Down goes the dummy. Okay, so Ace of Hearts um, lead obviously promises the king. Now we're in two spades, so I'd be looking at, when you're in a trump contract, I look at my potential losers and then look to see how I, how I think I can decrease those number of losers. Um, so, from a left to right, from, from our hand perspective, we've got one certain loser in spades, the ace. We might have two losers in spades if they don't split nicely. If the jack gets rid of the ace and the king-queen then fells the suit, i.e. the spades are three and three, we will only lose one spade. Um, but it's more, more often than not, when you're missing six cards, they will break four two. Um, so it's quite likely we've got two losing spades, the ace and then the ten and or nine later on. Uh, diamonds, we have two losers in diamonds here. We've got two small diamonds, and we haven't got the queen in the dummy. So we've got to do something with these diamonds. Um, not particularly good, those diamonds. So we've got probably two losers here, probably two losers here. The clubs are much better. We've got no losing clubs. King, and we've got the ace on the table, so that deals with them. And hearts, we've got one loser. We're going to lose the ace, but we're not going to lose anymore. In fact, we're going to lose that right now. So it looks like two losers, two losers, one loser. That's what it looks like on the basis. That's before we've done anything, really. Um, Obviously, we can, we can try to reduce those losers, but even if we don't, and we do lose two spades, two diamonds and a heart, we are still going, to, uh, still going to make our contract of two spades. That's because we are maximum for our range, 15 points was the best we could have. And Dummy's turned up with some useful cards, the Ace of Clubs being the main one, the Jack of Spades also is, is somewhat helpful. 
So the way to reduce losers here, we've got a couple of options. Um, spades could break 3-3, we can't really do anything about that, they're either 3-3 or they're not. So we get rid of the ace of spades, cash the king, queen and, and see if they break. Uh, the diamonds, we've got an interesting situation, we've got jack-10 of diamonds here, so that's actually quite useful. Because even if the jack or 10 loses to the queen, the, the jack or 10, whichever one you didn't use, will be, re will be remaining as a, as a winner. So if we play the 10 of diamonds and, and run it, and let's say the queen is here, we've still got the other diamond as a winner. So that can actually immediately reduce our diamond losers to only one, even if the queen of diamonds is in the wrong hand, which will be on our left. The other alternative to get rid of these diamond losers would be to, to try and set dummies clubs up. So that would be play the king of clubs, play a low club to the ace, and play a low club back to our hand, trumping it. If the clubs are breaking three and three, we will then um, have club winners set up on the table. The problem with this line is that we have no entries to those clubs. So by setting up the clubs, even if they are 3-3, three and three, we can't get back to the dummy to then win the clubs to throw our diamond losers away on. So setting the clubs up doesn't really work because of our lack of entries to dummy. So to me, it looks like the best bet is going to be draw the trumps and take the diamond finesse. If the diamond finesse wins or fails, we will then only have one diamond loser. We might only have one spade loser if the trumps indeed prove to be 3-3. Three and three. Um, but we can't really do anything about that. They're either 3-3 three, three, or they're not. There is a very slim outside chance of Jack-10-9 of hearts becoming good. And this will only happen if the opponents persist with hearts. So if they play the Ace of hearts, which wins, and then they play the King of hearts, which we can trump, we might then be able to play the Jack of hearts, setting up the 10-9 of hearts, depending on where the Queen is. The Queen's on our right, we might be able to finesse the hearts and therefore discard the Diamond Losers on those heart winners instead. This relies on a missed defence, um, so I'm not going to count on that. Um, really, the defenders, when they see this long, threatening heart suit in W, should be turning away from hearts and probably switching to either trumps or clubs uh, because they don't really want to be cashing the king on the hope that we've got another heart because they're actually setting our heart winners up for us. Um, so, so basically, we need the trumps 3-3 to reduce trump losers. We're going to take, take a diamond finesse to see if we can reduce losers there. It's likely we'll lose one diamond and not two. So therefore, we're going to lose either one or two. We're going to lose one here, probably, and one there. So we're going to make probably nine or ten tricks, depending on how the spades break. Interestingly, if we catch the ace-king of diamonds ridding ourselves of diamonds and trump a diamond in the dummy, that looks like something attractive to do, but actually isn't that good because the ace-king is killing the jack-ten, which are useful, and we're then roughing with the jack of spades, which is very useful with regards to the spade suit. So in fact it's better to just draw out the ace of spades with the jack and then take the diamond finesse as our, our kind of second plan with regards to diamond losers. Um, but yeah, it looks like this contract is safe, which is a case of how many over tricks. If spades break, we're probably going to make game, which is a bit annoying, but we shouldn't have bid it, so that's fine. Obviously on this particular trick, there's no, there's no choice. We're playing a low heart, and as soon as we get the lead, we're going to try and draw the trumps and then do the diamond finesse. But for now, of course, we'll play a low heart. Okay. So, South has got to decide what card to play on the Ace of Hearts. Now, it depends on their signalling methods, and it also depends on what South thinks about the heart suit. If we look, Jack-10-9 looks somewhat threatening in the dummy. So, the Ace of Hearts being led, we sort of don't want our partners to continue hearts, even though we know they have the King. It's quite likely that Declarer is short in hearts, and in fact, continuing hearts will set the Jack-10-9 of hearts up as winners on the table. So I think we should be discouraging here, even though we have the Queen, it's unusual to discourage, but I think we want to discourage because of the heart threat in dummy. If we had Queen Jack, we would certainly be encouraging, because we basically aren't setting anything up for the dummy. Um, so whatever card you play needs to be discouraging. Now I personally play low encouraging, so therefore I would play the 6, attempting to discourage, but obviously that depends on your signalling methods. I, I would be playing the, the 6 to uh, try to discourage a continuation of hearts. And of course Declare is following low. So that's one trick for the defenders. Now, North, uh, having led the Ace of Hearts, should be discouraged by the Six, but also discouraged by the look. They can also see Dummy's Hearts. They probably don't want to continue the King of Hearts anyway. Uh, the idea behind this is, if Declarer has the Queen of Hearts, you're setting the Hearts up for them. And if De Partner has the Queen of Hearts, it's likely Declarer's roughing, so you're setting the Hearts up for them. So either way, cashing the King of Hearts doesn't look like a good idea. Um, and you can see it's actually a very bad idea, because it, it allows them to trump it, and so on and so forth. What, declare, what um, North plays next sorry, um, is really tricky. They don't really want to switch to diamonds away from the Queen, given that they can see Jack-10 on the dummy. They don't really want to switch to clubs with Jack-X of clubs and the 10 on dummy. They might actually be setting clubs up for Declarer by doing that. So I would probably now passively exit with a trump. Um, I don't really know what else to do as North. Don't want to play hearts, don't want to play diamonds, don't want to play clubs. So I guess it's got to be a trump. Which, which trump you play doesn't really matter. 
Technically, from three small or three to the ten, you, you can you can choose. Um, it doesn't matter because you know the jack's there. So I would I would play a low trump. Um, so we play the jack. This hand will probably win the ace. If this hand ducks, we need to cross the hand with a with a diamond or a club, and then draw trumps. Um, this hand most likely will win the ace of spades. So we play low. That's such. So the defenders have won two tricks. Now it's important to notice that North wasn't playing a spade in the hope their partner has the ace. They were just playing a spade because they didn't know what else to do, basically. And now, this is where something interesting can happen. Now, South can lead hearts from their hand because South knows that North has the king of hearts and suspects that Declarer is short in hearts, but you're now not setting the hearts up because you're leading a low heart, which Declarer has got to trump before the king of hearts has been played. So the difference there is leading the king of hearts you can trump it and set the jack-10-9 up, whereas leading a low heart through declarer, the king of hearts has not yet been played, so the hearts are not set up. So it's a good idea now to play hearts. See, the, It's important you see the difference there. Leading a heart from this hand is okay, leading a heart from this hand is not as good because of where declarer trumps it. They have to trump it in second rather than fourth. So we would trump it because we don't want to lead, lose hearts unnecessarily. North plays small, and as declarer, we now have the lead. Now, we should have been counting trumps. You should always be counting trumps when you're a trump contract. We've played five trumps so far. We've played a round of four when it went low, jack, ace, low. And we've just trumped in a heart. So that's five trumps. We have four is nine. So the opponents have four left. We're hoping the king, queen of spades will fell the spade suit, i.e. the spades are now two and two. And therefore, we can turn our attention to diamonds. Um, as it happens, we're very lucky. You can see on the king, queen of spades, which are the next two tricks we're going to play, both opponents follow to both spades. That's very nice of them. So it means we don't have any losing spades. So we only actually lost one in total, the ace. So those two spades get played, and those two spades get played. Now what I would throw from the dummy is basically any black card, apart from the ace, obviously. That's a bit daft, really. I would keep the jack-10-9 of hearts, because they're somewhat threatening against the king-queen. And I would keep the jack-10 of diamonds, because they're somewhat threatening against the queen. The clubs are not going to be useful to us. Even though we might set them up, we've not got the entries to do so. So I would throw two clubs on these two spades. And we've now drawn the trumps rather nicely. That's because they broke nicely as well, to be fair. Now I would turn our attention to the diamond suit. It's practically guaranteed we're going to lose one diamond in this suit, because even if we cross to the dummy with the ace and lead the jack of diamonds, even if the queen is in the right hand, which it isn't, but even if the queen is in the correct hand on the right hand side, they can play the queen on the second honour, and then the nine of diamonds will be a loser anyway. So we actually can't really avoid a diamond loser. So what I would do, I mean you could cross the ace of clubs, lead the jack of diamonds and lose it to the queen and or get covered by the queen. But we're going to lose a diamond, so I would just play a low diamond. They would probably hop up with the queen. Um, as it happens it doesn't matter, but they probably would hop up with the queen, concerned. Difficult for the defender to do that. If they duck once, they can see their partner doesn't beat the jack. Again, it doesn't actually matter because we have this little diamond still. We're still going to lose a diamond. So whether they play low or the queen, Either way, we're going to lose one diamond. Let's say they play low, which is like the, the slowest way for the defenders. The ten or jack wins, as such. Some defenders would, well, would definitely have been tempted to take the queen there, though. And even still, we still have a diamond loser. We just can't get rid of this little diamond. We play a diamond from there and run it, the queen will win. If we play a low diamond towards the jack, they will now certainly take the queen. So there's no way of avoiding it. We don't have the nine as any threat against the, against the queen in hand. So we're just going to lose a diamond. No, no way of avoiding it. The best chance, I suppose, is play a diamond to the ace-king, knowing the queen must be on our left. And then sort of running all of our trumps and winners and hoping that they threw the wrong card away. So now the best bet, psychologically speaking, mathematically we've got no chance of avoiding this diamond loser, but psychologically you might play these winners, this winner, and these winners in the hope that this five of diamonds suddenly manifests itself as a trick because they've thrown everything else away. But good defenders, what they will do is they will hold on to suits separately. What that means is this hand will hold on to the clubs so the clubs don't become good. This hand will hold on to the diamonds so our five of diamonds doesn't become good. So we've got no way of actually avoiding this diamond loser. So, assuming the defenders aren't silly, we're going to end up losing this trick, but these are now all winners. King is a winner, king ace of clubs is a winner, and those two trumps are winners. So what that means is we've got five more tricks coming, one more loser. So we're actually going to make ten tricks... I'm going to lose the last one, so we're going to make 10 tricks in total. So we could have made four spades, but we definitely shouldn't have bid it.